What's going on people? Back with a bang. This is the Money Management back here to bring you guys another video today. So in this video, it is going to be about the stocks to watch for this upcoming week. And to be honest, this is a huge week for earnings, especially when it comes to tech. As you can see here, big tech earnings this week. And let me just pull up the calendar because I tell you what, look, Monday we've got Philips and Logitech. In fact, I need to get some stuff from Logitech regarding my office setup. But anyway, moving on to Tuesday, this is a big one. Microsoft, Google, Coca-Cola, Visa, Chipotle, Spotify. Then check out Wednesday. You've got Meta, also previously known as Facebook. You've got Boeing, Ford, TDoc as well. Then check out Thursday. This is where it gets huge. Apple, Amazon, Intel, McDonald's, and Shopify, all on Thursday. Then moving on to Friday, we've got that oil sector. We've got ExxonMobil, Chevron, and a couple others as well. So I'm definitely excited for this coming week. Once again, it's going to be an exciting week because there are so many important stocks in reporting earnings, so many big tech stocks. I mean, I'm looking to see some stocks make new yearly highs, some make new 52-week highs, um, more in regards to the oil and gas sector. But overall, like I said, bring on this week. Now, we will do a little bit of a recap on how this past week panned out. Um, to be honest, once again, it was a week with many surprises, many twists and turns, and many shocks. But before we get into that, just want to look at a few titles of these articles. So another big rate hike is coming. Interesting. Fed set to raise rates by 0.75 points. Hmm. Don't know about that. And then... What else have we got? Yeah, okay, that's mainly it. And then here you see Bitcoin is still above 19K, which is always kind of a little bit of an indication about how the markets, the overall markets are looking going into the new week. I'm 65 and want to retire in six months. I have 112. You know what? For those of you who are younger than 50 right now watching this video, please remember, let's try and retire way ahead of time and then live the life of our dreams in the future. Anyway. Let's go on to trading view. Let's check out some of these charts. Okay, so where to start? To be honest, we could start anywhere. There's so many places we could start. You know, um, this week Netflix had their earnings, Tesla had their earnings. Let's start with those two. Start off with Netflix. Netflix did what I did not expect it to do. Netflix earnings caused the stock to skyrocket when in reality I was thinking you know what this is one of those stocks that's gonna drop off purely because you know they've been losing a lot of subscribers there's been a lot of negative news around Netflix also in regards to their 6.99 ads that they were gonna start charging I thought it's not looking good for Netflix lo and behold <laughs> It was looking very good for Netflix. So Tuesdays when they had the earnings, Tuesday it was at 246. It was under 250. That range I told you guys about, that 250 resistance, it broke through and ended the week up around 290. So Netflix did its thing, and this could be the return of Netflix. This could be the beginning of the recovery. Who knows? Now moving on to Tesla. Tesla, on the other hand, did the opposite quite the opposite. Tesla was trading around 227 for a while and before you knew it, Tesla was back down to lows of 202 I believe, 202 or 203. Now I wanted shares under $200 as I've stated multiple times in recent weeks but unfortunately that still didn't happen. Have a look here. Yeah, it went down to 202. Again, it was trending around, well, Tuesday it got to around 2.30, then after earnings it got to around 2.02 and then Friday it managed to rally. So Tesla is still hovering in a pretty dangerous level I'd say because again this is a $10, $12 drop and it's back to the lows of this year. I'm just kind of keeping my eyes out on Tesla this week as well just seeing how it performs. Then next on I want to talk about 
Exxon Mobil Corporation, ticker symbol XOM. This finally reached $105. It finally reached yearly highs. It finally reached all time highs, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the kind of thing I'm talking about when I say, look for those pullbacks. Because those pullbacks on a stock like this on, in recent times, only means you're getting yourself a great entry for an amazing swing. To the upside, usually to the upside, let's be honest. $105.86. Zom has been on a crazy run. It's on my watch this almost every week to make new highs, and that's pretty much just what it does. It doesn't even hesitate. Look at that. Every time it pulls back to the moving average and pushes upwards, pulls back to the moving average, pushes upwards. With earnings coming up this Friday, I'm expecting a similar thing, but don't just FOMO into it. Wait for it to sell off a bit. Wait for it to cool off a bit. Like I usually say in my videos, let that stock sell off, cool off before we can attack it. But yes, we can eat off these call options. I do believe so. Now a couple other stocks I'm watching for this week. Like I said, we've got Intel, so INPC. You guys may know I like playing AMD, NVIDIA. This is another one, another one of those when it comes to the semiconductor sector. So here's Intel. Let's have a look at the daily chart. And there you have it. Trending below all the moving averages. Quite bearish, right? But starting to show signs of it bottoming out here and pushing upwards. Close just above this moving average, which is an important sign. RSI pointing upwards. Good direction. I mean, we'll have to see. I don't know what the expectations are, but it is interesting to see these kind of stocks because, you know, they gap down here. Last earnings also gap down. But now it looks like it's making a little bit of a recovery, which is what I like to see when it comes to these kind of stocks. Because long term, they're good value for money. Of course, it doesn't mean the bear run is over and it's time to get calls. But it does mean you might be able to get a little bit of a profit to the upside in the short term. Let's also look at, I want to go with either Coca-Cola or I'm going to go with Ford or Amazon. I'll go with Amazon. And then we can look at Apple as well. Amazon. Never reached my $100 price point. We started to trend towards it, got to lows of 106 but started reversing and broke above the moving average this week. In all honesty, my price targets would be up here, $124, $125, just a $6 run-up. It would have been nice to catch this last week, you know, when it was $107, catch the $12 run-up. But I, like I said, I don't think it's done yet. At the same time, there's always potential to the downside. I mean, last earnings, we gapped up. Earnings before that, we gapped down. So, like I said, it could go either way. Just like what happened with Netflix. Remember, with Netflix, like I mentioned to you guys, this earnings gapped up. Last earnings was bullish. Earnings before that gapped down majorly. So, like I said, Amazon price target would be 124. I think we can see that this week. But is it going to pump before earnings or after earnings? That's what we don't know. Earnings is Thursday after hours, so it's really at the end of the week. But like I said, I'm just going to be watching it to see how it performs. So, Amazon and Intel both on Thursday. Let's find the last one that I'm really watching for Thursday after close as well. And that's Apple. The $157 is where I have my level of resistance. $152 is where you have the moving average. It broke above my level of resistance after failing to really break above it for a while, right? Now it's just broken above and closed above. This zone here is going to be critical. If we can break out of this blue zone here and push up to the moving average, we could be on for a fun ride back up to $157, which is a $10 jump, and then eventually back up to the $160s. Ideally, I could have got Apple shares um, here where my white line is around $126, but we never reached that, just like with Amazon. But does that mean we're not going to get there? Doesn't necessarily mean so. We could still see new lows this week. If earnings doesn't go to plan, if we're hearing bad news in regards to the numbers, in regards to the maybe the new iPhone sales, um, the issues with the new iPhone, the functionality, that could cause negative sentiment around the stock. That could cause the stock to drop. Who knows? Apple's another place where I actually need to buy some products from this week. So who knows if I'm helping their earnings? I don't know, probably not. But like I said, you just got to watch what happens. Last earnings, it gapped up. Earnings before that, not much crazy movement happened. But this is one of those weeks where a lot of crazy stuff can happen. So I'll tell you again, please strap in for the ride. Now, let me just look at a couple other stocks. We're going to go with Meta. It's really a big week, guys. And luckily, there are no Fed speakers this week. So we're good on that part. Meta, $130. I didn't think I'd see Meta this low 
when I first bought the stock back in 2018. Yeah, in 2018, it was $124. So maybe beginning of 2019, I would have bought the stock. But yeah, it's back to the lows that it was at in 2018, December 2018. So, whew, man, it's been a ride. You know, I'm speaking from a shareholder's perspective here. Daily resistance zone up at 146. But if you guys remember last earnings, it was pretty wild. Okay, never mind. It wasn't last earnings. It must have been the earnings before. It was pretty wild. Here we go. Ain't it just shot up? It just went ridiculously high. I remember this week. Well, I traveled that week. Facebook did the unexpected, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> but since then, it sold off overall. And now, it got down to the end of last week. It could be finding a support around $122. You know, if they push it down before earnings and run up to Wednesday's earnings, Wednesday or Tuesday's earnings. But yeah, if they push it down and run up to earnings, I think it's Wednesday after hours, yeah. Here we go. Um, yeah, if they push it down and run up, that's an $8 drop. You can still profit off that pretty nicely if you're in the puts. On the other hand, you could still trade it to the upside post earnings. Just trade the earnings reaction. Either way, I'm intrigued to see how that one pans out. CVX, another one I told you guys, share on it's Friday. It's like ExxonMobil, Chevron needs to cool off a bit, maybe pull back to around $164, you know, an $8 drop, maybe this daily resistance zone. If you look on a smaller time frame, four hour chart, yeah, it's due a little bit of a pullback. So I don't know if it's going to push up higher before it pulls back, but it is due a pullback. I'm waiting for that pullback when it comes, whenever it happens, that's what I'm waiting for. Now moving on to Walmart, tick symbol WMT. Walmart had a great week, $136. 80 is where it finished at. If we check the daily chart, no inside bars as of late, but back to back green days, just pushing into that daily resistance zone. The next target is around 138, but it could get rejected from this daily resistance zone and start downtrending again to 132. So it's at a critical level right now. 137 is my resistance. Look how it gapped up above my resistance last time in August. Let's see how it performs. You know, earnings is in a few weeks from now. So that doesn't really have a part to play just yet, but the resistance and well, the resistance zone and the resistance line have got a part to play right now. Look at a couple more. First, Roblox symbol RBLX. Roblox gapped up from Friday to Monday and kind of held strong this week. So now sitting around forty-two dollars, kind of in this little channel here between my resistances. We're trying to see if it can break out now and get up to around $46, $47, where there's daily and weekly resistance is. That is what we're looking at for Roblox. And then lastly, but not least, Coinbase, tick symbol C-O-I-N. Coinbase, now $66. When I trade Coinbase to the upside, after it hits this daily support zone, my price target is always $73. Here we go, $73, right here. This line here, and we're at that zone where it keeps bouncing. Once it dropped to this zone, twice, three times, four times, five times it dropped to this zone and started uptrending. It dropped to this zone and started uptrending uh, by 4.3% on Friday. Now my price target is $73 for Coinbase. So I hope you guys enjoyed this watch list. What I do want to say is please check out the actual Discord because that's where the full watch list will be available one hour before pre market tomorrow, as always. Also, make sure you guys check out everything we have in Royal Trading Academy. You can come there and see what we've got going on, the live trading, the chats, stock breakdowns, the call outs. We've got so much going on in the Royal Trading Academy, so come and check us out. Then we've also got the Stock Option Starter Pack. That is my course. You guys can check that one out. Link in the description below. 10 videos you guys will have access to for life. And of course, we have my socials. I'm on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at The Wealth Prince. So check me out there as well. So that's a few of the stocks I'm watching for this week. I hope you guys did enjoy this breakdown. As always, make sure you drop that thumbs up to show the appreciation. Let's get those likes up. We're not hitting the same levels as we were a year ago, you know, 16 months ago, 18 months ago. So let's try and get those likes up. Also, please drop a comment. Just let me know your thoughts on the video. Let me know how you feel about this upcoming week. If you're new around here, make sure you hit the red button and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And overall, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys are ready for another great trading week. Thanks a lot for watching today's video. That is it for me. Have a great Sunday. I got into making, you got into making. See you guys next time for another video. Peace.